Hello world, how are you doing today? I think Gen Z gives me hope for the future. After the pandemic hit, <clears throat> it seemed like for a while that things were very doom and gloom, that um, it seemed like the world was ending, people were very negative and feeling a lot of pressure and feeling a lot of uh, anger and hatred and frustration and um, confusion, really. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are projecting that, you know, there's going to be just a lot of suffering and a big downfall and all things like that, especially in the West, like the Western world. I feel like in the United States, it's, it's palpable. Like there's this uncertainty, there's a a fear and, and confusion and I feel it too and it affects me quite a bit even though I try very hard to not be affected by things I still feel it and sometimes it does get me down and I think about it very deeply and and it's like um, you know what do we do about it like what can we do to to change it we I mean a lot of us feel probably helpless because we're just one person and then we end up getting in clicks that's what i'm seeing a lot like people are just getting into clicks people are getting into groups because they're like oh i don't you know trust anybody like let's just form our own group let's protect each other let's have our own circle and you know for someone like me who who's very highly independent and really wants to not depend on anybody um it doesn't make me feel very comfortable. And it's pushing me to feel like, okay, well, now I have to find my own tribe. I have to find my own cult, uh, not cult. <laughs> I was about to say cult, but uh, my own group, my own squad, my own, you know, clique. And it's not because I'm a, like a separatist or I don't know if that's the right word. I'm, I'm not somebody who wants to dry, just like, you know, separate from the rest of the world and be like our own little thing and make our own rules, etc. I just think it's important to connect with others and, um, you know, and the internet has been such a great tool for me to connect with people that I never would have been able to ever connect with, you know, and so the internet's so powerful. It's so great. Um, but... I'm optimistic, regardless of all the things that are going on, the, you know, the feeling like there's so much separation and division going on. I still feel very optimistic about the future. I feel like the world is going to be a better place. You know, in these times of turmoil and these times of confusion, it's, it's a good, I think, I, I believe it's a good sign. I believe that there's just conflict and you know, a lot of arguments, a lot of conversations being had. And I feel like, um, my nose itch, so, you know, my, uh, maybe there's a belief that maybe it's not true, maybe you have a doubt, but because when you rub, when your nose itches, that means you're not really believing in what you have to say. It's body language. Um, look it up. <laughs> um, I hate that. I hate saying something and then feeling like I doubt it. But I do, I do feel, I really do feel um, on a conscious, may, may, maybe not on some conscious level, but on a conscious level, I do feel like I am optimistic about the future. I hear a lot of uh, viewpoints from the Republican side of the United States and also the Democratic side. And there's just a very polarizing different view. Um, from the democratic side is like, okay, we, you know, we want to be more fair to people. We want to have equality. We want to make sure that we're taking care of the poor. Or we're taking care of people of other races who don't have the advantages. And the Republican side is like, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Stop complaining. Stop canceling people's uh, capitalism is the way to go. We need supply and demand. And it's true. These things are all true. And the more they get hardened to their point of view, the more I don't trust anybody. And really the answer lies in the middle of both. Like if there's two polarizing views, there must be a correct view somewhere in the middle. 
And that's where I stand. I usually stand in the middle of both views because I see both why both views might be correct. And I just apply myself uh, as a centrist and, and see what see what's in the middle to really figure out what the like the true answer lies in the middle. That's what I really believe. Um, but when I see what democratic people are all about and like what Gen Z is all about and what the new generation is all about. I kind of see like, you know, we, we, we can, we can uh, empathize as much as we want with the Republican view. And I do agree with a lot of Republican views or right wing views. I'm not a right winger by any, by any means, but I do see that there are, um, there's a lot of truth that is being said in their views. But I, my question for any person is, what is your intent? Like, are you saying these things because it benefits you personally? Or are you saying this because it benefits every other person? And for the, for the most part, I do think that most people think and believe things that will benefit them the most. It's not, it's, it's about them themselves first before it is about anybody else. It's very rare, I believe, that someone really thinks about everyone else uh, before themselves and their family. I just don't, I, I just don't see it. I feel like humans are, uh, you know, uh, are, you know, in, 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 and importantly, they have to be selfish. Like, I do believe that we have to be selfish. It's part of being a human because if we're not selfish, I don't think, and, and we don't have an ego, we wouldn't achieve the things that we do and we wouldn't make the world the way it is. I just don't subscribe to the doom and gloom as much as some people do. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's not, I think it's, it's smart to be prepared. I do think that that's true. Like you have to think like there is a possibility and to be prepared is, is, is a good thing, but to focus too much on the negative and the, the doom and gloom and the, the, you know, the apocalyptic, uh, projection, I think is is just unnecessary. I think that's too much to think that the world is ending, to think that everything is going to collapse and people are just going to go out in the street and start uh, rioting and stealing and it's going to be just anarchy. It's going to be Mad Max, uh, the movie, like, uh, you know, just an anarchist society. I just don't believe that to be true. I don't think that, I don't see that happening because of how... Um, how long we have been quote unquote civilized um and so i don't think anybody should be too stressed out about that i think if we're stressing out about the future we're not really doing it. we're doing ourselves a disservice the best thing we can do is be prepared to find a way to be prepared um whether that be to, to supply yourself with ways to have energy heat or water or food when when things go haywire, that's important. But to really focus on that and to get obsessive over that, I think is is just, I, I think that's, it, you're just doing yourself a disservice. The reason I say this is because I just have a lot of hope in the upcoming generation. And I never wanted to say this because I didn't want to feel old, but um, I think it's time for me to say that I really do believe that the new generation is going to uh, save the world. I really do. I just have so much hope when I see people that are like 25 and under, um, even anybody in their 20s, like have such fervor and such passion for equality and for um, making sure that people are um, valued for who they are and not what they look like. and. It, it, and call me woke as much as you want, or call me a part of the cancel culture woke mob as much as you want, but to just, to just uh, write off this very special group of people uh, because it, it, it conflicts with your point of view, because it conflicts with your personal interests is highly selfish and highly greedy. And I really do believe that um, that there's just a lot of this rhetoric out there because it, it just benefits them and not the rest of the world. 
What benefits the rest of the world is seeing these highly humanitarian uh, views. Our, the only issue is that we, who, uh, the only issue is that the people that oppose this socialist cap, uh, socialist or Marxist or whatever, they, they believe this socialism is happening um, in, in the United States especially, is that your problem isn't with people being treated equally. This is something that you don't really address. You don't really take uh, uh, into account. What your issue is, is fearing what might happen if there's a new way of thinking or there's a new way of treating people or there's a new way of uh, relating to people on just like a, just like on official level. You, the fear is that it's going to take away your freedom or take away your, you know, your right to bear arms or your, all these things that you feel like things are going to be taken away, that you're not going to have enough power anymore. And so draw the line. And I think that most, for the most part, a lot of people have been drawing the line, but to discredit the positives of either view from either side is what I believe is the downfall, is that if we don't acknowledge the altruistic opinions and views of either side, we are not going to ever make progress. And that's what we want. We want to make progress. We want to be better people. We want to be better humans. We want to be better relating to other people on a global scale, not just on, you know, on home soil. It's about everyone. And that's what we got to think. We, we can't think of in terms of like, who's race, who's what. There's just who's an asshole and who's not an asshole. That's really what's important. We want to get rid of the, all the assholes, right? That's what cancel culture is about. We're getting rid of assholes. And that's a focus. We should be chanting on the streets, let's get, or get rid of assholes. It's not, you know, let's get rid of this uh, group or this organization or this person or cancel this or that. It's just in general, let's get rid of the fucking villain assholes and get them the hell out of here and not give them the power and if there's people that are in power that are doing nefarious things, it is to tell them that stop it. Stop doing that shit. You know, it's not cool. You're not helping people. And when we start to do that, when we start to let people know that there are consequences to nefarious behavior is when we really start to make that progress. Because I'm in the camp of we can change the world. We can make the world a better place. We can make the world a very, a world full of people that are kind and loving and happy. And, and it sounds like it's a utopia uh, mindset, utopian, utopian mindset that, oh yeah, like the world's gonna just going to be perfect one day. It's probably not, but we can get close. We can get there. And I think it's just if we can lead people that way. And I, I really believe that we can because... As human beings, we uh, we want that. That's what we truly want. That's what movies are all about. Marvel, Avengers, the you know highest grossing films of all time, Marvel, superheroes. It's all about beating the bad guy. That's deeply an inherent, like it's a very deeply ingrained thing inside of us that we want to see bad guys go down and we want to see good guys defeat the bad guys. We want good. We want... Um, heroism. We want positivity. We want to uh, eliminate the uh, uh, just the evil in this world. It's in us. We want that. And we just need to be led that way. And we forget that we don't need a person or a thing or a movement to tell us that we can do that. We can start today as on an individual level, what can I do what can I say? How can I behave in a way that uh, gives people hope that we can be um, we can be good people? And I don't think we're very far away from that. I have so much, so much faith in the upcoming uh, generation. Um, we just have to make sure that we're not going too far, 
that we're not going so far that we're overcorrecting. But has there been assholes? Has there been pieces of shit who've been running uh, groups or countries or led the world in a way that is not beneficial for humankind? Yeah. And we need to stop that. And we need to make sure that they know that by speaking up and and speaking up and really driving home the points that we want to make about being a good person, really. Just being a good person, being a decent person, being a loving person, being a, a, a person that provides value rather than takes value and spreads happiness. All right. That's what I wanted to say today. That's what I don't want to share. What I wanted to share. I've just been thinking about yesterday, that yesterday. And um, I hope that this is something that you can um, think about as well and really just consider and um, maybe share these thoughts, you know, after thinking about it with people that are around you. And it starts today. It starts with us. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video.